Our text is the gospel lesson, specifically these words. Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for my souls. Let's pray. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, we come weak and weary at times, wore out, down, strength with no strength. Fill us, O Lord, with your presence, your spirit, for it is you who give us strength that renews like the eagles, who makes us so we can run and not faint. Lord Jesus, we pray only in you will we find that. Amen. Weary and Burden is our title today. Let's start off with a song that I sang growing up every Communion Sunday. It was a Communion song that we sang every single time we had Communion. I come, O Savior, to thy table, for weak and weary is my soul. Thou, bread of life alone, art able to satisfy and make me whole. Weary I am and heavy burden. With sin my soul is sore oppressed. Receive me graciously and gladden my heart, for I am now thy guest. Weak and weary and burden. How those words resound in our life. For there are times that we just are worn out. There are times that we're just beaten down, discouraged, depressed, and devastated. These are the times we don't have any strength left to fight, any strength just even to stand. Mercy Me has a song that's on Joy FM, and it starts out this way. I love it. Are you disappointed? Are you desperate for help? You know what it's like to be tired and only a shell of yourself. Well, you start to believe you don't have what it takes because all it takes all you have to do just to move, much less finish the race. I like those words because it's true. If you have sought to walk with God, if you have striven to make him first in your life, if you have answered Jesus Christ's call to follow me, then you understand this song. You understand what it means to be in the place that all you can do is just move, much less stand for God, much less finish the race. And when we're in that point of that total depression, overwhelmness, when we're so weak and heavy burdened, Jesus says to us these words, Come to me, all who will labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's at times like these, that Jesus calls us to himself. Come, you who are weary. Come, when you are heavy laden. Come. I like the way the People's Bible Commentary puts it. The weary and the burdened are the ones to whom Jesus chooses to reveal the Father. To the weary and the burdened, to those who find no strength in themselves, to those who are wore out, to those who seek and come only to God, it is those that Jesus reveals the Father. For it was to the burden that Jesus came. Those who are burdened with their sins, those who are burdened with their failures, those that are burdened with their past. Listen to carefully to what Jesus himself said about why he came. 
And he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed, anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. God has sent me to recover the sight of the blind. He has sent me to set free those who are oppressed. He has sent me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. To those of us who are captive to our fears, our sins, and our failures, it is Christ who comes to proclaim liberty and freedom from them all. To those of us that are blinded, we're blinded by unbelief and our doubt. Jesus came for us to see and to believe. Believe in a God who truly loves us. A God who is truly there. A God who really is on your side. To those who are oppressed by addictions, abuse, injustice. It is Jesus and him alone that sets us free. For those who doubt God's love and God's forgiveness, Jesus came to tell you about God's favor. God loves you. God sees you and cares for you. No matter what situation you're in right now, God is speaking to you, and he is speaking words of rest. Come unto me, ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is to the burdened that Jesus says, I will give you rest. You know, the truth is, there are two different types of Christian. And the difference between the burdened Christian, who's constantly feeling oppressed, never feels the freedom, and the Christian at rest, those who no matter what the situation is, always seem to have that peace inside of them. That difference is not the amount that they strive to be like Christ. That difference is not the amount that they seek to be holy and obedient to God. It's not the amount of time they pray or tithe, the hours they serve, or the greatness of the sacrifices. Both do that. But the difference between the burdened Christian, the one who is always oppressed, the one who always feels down, and the one at rest, is the one at rest knows who he is. He knows who he is in Christ Jesus. I encourage you to go home today and read the first two chapters of the book of Ephesians. In those two chapters, Paul goes to great lengths to explain to you who you are in Jesus Christ. Now, I don't got time to go through all of those two chapters, but I'm going to take the first seven verses. Actually, verses two through eight. And I want to read them to you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, which in accordance to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace, which he has lavished upon us in all wisdom and in insight. That tells you who you are. Who you are in Jesus Christ. You are one who has peace with God. You are one who has 
received and been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You are one who was chosen by God before the foundation of this world. You are one who is holy and blameless in God's sight. You are one who has been adopted as a son or a daughter of God. You are one who has been blessed with glorious grace, grace upon grace. One who has been redeemed, has been brought back to God from hell. You are one who has forgiveness for all your sins. You are one who has been given the riches of God's grace. And I love the way Paul closes with this. And all of this has been lavished, poured out over abundance upon you. This is who you are, folks. This is who you are. That's why even for striving with the kingdom, even dealing with problems in our lives, we can be at rest. We are at rest for our past is cleansed. We are at rest because our future is secured. We are at rest because our presence is under God's control. You and I are resting in the hands of a loving Father. You and I are resting in the hands of that loving God. That is why we can say with Paul, therefore we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary and light afflictions is producing for us an absolutely incomparable, eternal weight of glory. That's what's being produced in you. Eternal weight of glory. So therefore, we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We are at rest. Jesus gives us rest. Oh, we may stumble. And we may fall. We may sin. The reality is we may have to work hard to get ourselves back in that right relationship with God because we've allowed sin to corrupt us. But we know who we are even at those times. That never changes. Christ has given us that rest. Come, you are weary and heaven laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. So Jesus calls to us then to come and take his yoke. Again, from a commentary on Matthew. The yoke that Jesus asks us to take upon ourselves might be defined as the whole Christian life and hope. Once we have assumed that yoke, God's commandments are no longer a heavy burden that weighs us down and destroys us. Instead, they are expression of God's will in which we delight, for we always look for ways to express our thanks to God for the blessing of his faith. God's commandments now become a delight because they are our opportunity to express our joy and thanks to God. So the truth is, the yoke that Jesus talks about, that he wants to put on us, is nothing more than living in the way and the plan that God created for us in the first place. To live as God intended us. Literally, to live as God created Adam and Eve to do that. Now, in your sermon notes, you really don't see it much as a... Uh, at least on the screen, you don't really see it as a chart, but this chart's been put together by uh, Clown and Townsend, a book called How People Grow, What the Bible Reveals About Personal Growth, and it's just a really great way to explain what God's original plan was and how we've corrupted it because of sin. So I'm going to go through this because I want you to understand this first one that we go through, this is how God intended man to live, and this is how God now through Christ wants us to live and calls us to live. First of all, God is the source. 
God's the source of everything, and we are to depend on God. I don't think it's in your sermon notes, guys. Couldn't fit it in. God is the creator. We are the creation and cannot exist unto ourselves. I want you to think, all you people out here, you're sitting in a car. Does your car totally exist for one purpose, for your use? There's no other purpose for it. As long as it's your car, it's for your use. Everything that man has created is for his use. Your dishwasher at home is for your use, so you don't have to wash dishes. Now, if you're like Cindy and I, we just use it as a drying rack, but that's beside the point. Everything ever created by man was for one purpose, to serve man, to make your life easier, to make my life easier. Do you not realize the same thing is true with God? You were created by God for God. Literally, we are told that the, the purpose of man is to receive and enjoy the blessings of God and to live and give him glory. That's your purpose. That's what you're created for. Third, God had control of the world. And we are responsible to have control of ourselves, not everything else. God is the judge of life. And because God is a judge, we're simply to experience life and enjoy it. God designed life and its rules. And we are called to obey those rules and live the life that God designed. That's how God created the world. That's how God set it up for Adam and Eve. But then sin came. And sin corrupted God's plan. And so now we see the corruption of God plan in our life every day. We believe we're the source of everything, so therefore we depend on ourselves. We think we're the ones who must depend on ourselves. We believe now we're the creator, and so we think we exist for ourselves. Everything in our lives is about me. Our emotions, what we do, what we buy, what we eat, everything is all about me and we think the world exists to serve us we believe that we are in the control of the world and so we try to control the world and each other and we all know how well that works we become judges of all life which means we judge each other and ourselves and we constantly are judging ourselves and other people on how they live up to our standards. And finally, we uh, choose to design life by our rules. And so we live any way we want to. We have taken God's world and corrupted it and made ourselves the center. And the reality is it doesn't work. We live in a world that is overrun with drug addiction, pornography, alcoholism people killing each other beating each other up riots destroy everything else why because we refuse to live in god's plan because of sin we cannot live in god's plan but the truth is jesus come and he says take my yoke upon you and the yoke of jesus christ is nothing more and nothing less than the ability and the opportunity to live as God originally created us to live, to become what we were always meant to be. That's why it works, folks, because we become what we were all always meant to be, what we were created to be. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me, Jesus says. Stop and open your scripture and just stand back and read. Watch as Jesus cries over Lazarus. Watch as he has compassion for the widow at Nain. Watch as he touches the leper that no one else would get near. Watch as he forgives those who betrayed him on the cross and nailed him to it. Watch as he reassures Jairus 
when he's told his daughter is dead. And as you watch that, learn. Learn of just how much compassion Jesus has in your life. How much compassion he has for each and every one of us. How much his love is there for us. And then listen. Listen as Jesus talks to Nicodemus and shares the gospel. Who reminds him literally, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen to those words. Listen, he comforts the disciples in John 14 when he says, You believed in the Father, now believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. I went not so, I would not tell you. But I go and I come and I prepare a place for you, and then I bring you to where I am. As he promises the Holy Spirit to them, and he will not leave them alone. He'll never leave us alone. But he sends the Spirit to comfort and strengthen them. You look at all those. You listen as he speaks those words. And you learn of the love of Jesus for you. The love of Christ for you. Stand back. And just think for a minute and be stunned. Be stunned as Jesus turns water into wine. 60, 80 gallons, they say. That he stops a wind and the waves with just a word. Imagine a horrible storm. And just to be able to speak it, amaze how amazed we would be. How this man commands the demons to flee and they run from him. And then learn of the power of Jesus Christ for your life. For your life. You see, the more we learn of Jesus the closer we get to Jesus, the more we hunger for his word in our life, the lighter our burden becomes. For I am gentle, he says, and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Christ's burden is the cross. Your and my burden is the cross that we are to take. I love this quote. Cross-bearing is so intimately connected with the Christian profession, it's talking about profession of faith there, that all who refuse to take it upon themselves and bear their cross cannot be regarded as true Christians. Luther's remark on this matter are indeed pertinent. He writes, He who is no Croatius, if I may so speak, is also no Christianius. That is to say, he who does not bear his own cross is no Christian, for he does not conform to Christ the Master. We are called to bury the cross. We are called to suffer in Christ. But for the Christian, the cross is not an indication of death, but of life. Cross-bearing is not an indication of death, but of life. For the Christian who has died to themselves, the sufferings we bear are not burdensome, but rather bring life. They're life-bringing, folks. They're life-bringing. cross is again from, from Matthew, crosses we are called upon to bear on account of our loyalty for our Savior are faith-strengthening experiences, for they help us understand what Christ endured for us, that we have the Lord's promise that he will give us strength to endure them and that he will make them channels of all kinds of blessings. I'll be honest with you. So many uh, Christians today are not receiving God's blessings, are not maturing in Christ, because we do everything we can to avoid problems. We do everything we can to avoid suffering. And if one situation gets bad and we have suffered, we quit and we go somewhere else. We give up. And we never mature in Christ. Because it is through Bearing, it's through dealing the suffering and walking through it that God grows us. 
and we become strong and mature in Jesus Christ. If we keep giving up, if we keep trying to avoid any kind of burden in your life, you're never going to mature in Christ, folks. It ain't going to happen. It's a reality. It's something we all better face. You can't run away and grow in Christ. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Give you rest from your guilt, for it shall be removed. I give you rest from your struggles, for I will carry you and care for you. I give you rest from your fears, for I have made you mine, and no one can take you away. Find in me, Jesus says, find in me alone rest that is greater than your burdens or your crosses. Find rest that shines in your sufferings. Find rest that no person, no demon, or anything else can ever take from you or deny you. Find rest, knowing that in my love, you'll, it will never fail you, desert you, or deny you. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to God's plan. Come to live in God's love and God's life, and you will find rest. I started this sermon with a quote from the communion hymn, I come, O Savior, to thy table. I want to end it with the last verse. What higher gift can we inherit? It's faith, bond, and solid base. It is the strength of heart and of spirit. It's the covenant of hope and grace. Lord, may thy body and thy blood be for my soul the highest good. Come today. Come to the body and to the blood of our Lord Jesus and know Jesus' words have come true for you. Come to me all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from this day forward to life everlasting. Amen.